So we're going to go through chapter 26 notes real quickly today. Again, if you need to go back in the Google Classroom to look at these on your own, go ahead. But today we're going to talk about basic pricing policies. Um, it's important to establish a base price from which price adjustments can be made. So there's various situations and different policies that affect the pricing of a product. So determining the base price, there's three different ways. There's demand-oriented, competition-oriented, and cost-oriented. Okay, so the top part, demand, is the customer's perceived value, okay, using the supply and demand theory. Right, competition, there's no relationship between cost and price. You're just strictly basing your product based on the competition. And cost-oriented, okay, price set by actual cost, projected profit mark, Projected profit margins added to costs. So if you look at these individually, um, the demand oriented, you're attempting to determine what customers are willing to pay. So again, you have to be careful with this one. You don't want to outprice yourself and have people not be willing to pay what you're asking. Okay, Competition oriented, different ways you can do that is go above or below or go strictly in line with the competition. And then cost-oriented pricing, where you look at um, what did the product actually cost to make, and then using a markup. Okay, so this is used by wholesalers and retailers. So the markup is the difference between an item's cost and how much you sell it for. So if you're making tennis shoes and it costs you $12 to make the tennis shoe and you charge $50 for it, the difference in there is going to be your markup. So calculating the wholesale price, I want you guys to go ahead and actually come back and look at this slide again. Okay, so we have the manufacturer's suggested retail price, all right, and then they're going to mark up 40%. So the wholesaler's price to the retail retailer, subtract the markup from the manufacturer's suggested retail price, so you get $60. So the wholesaler's markup's 20%. Okay, so you subtract that. So the manufacturer's price to the wholesaler is $48. So what this is, is if you guys remember when you priced your cereal and you guys had to calculate the markups to the store and the markups, the markup from you to the store and the store to the customer, that's what this chart is showing you. And you will likely have something like this on your test tomorrow where I give you the numbers and you have to figure out the manufacturer's price to the wholesaler. Okay, so make sure you guys remember how to figure percentages for tomorrow. Also make sure you have access to a calculator. Okay, again, looking at the retail price. So cost of pricing the item, $40. So expenses and intended profit is 20% of the cost. You can see that's $8. So the price to the wholesaler, cost plus expenses, is $48. The wholesaler then marks up 25% of the price that the wholesaler paid, so that's $12. The wholesaler's price to the retailer, okay, price to wholesaler plus markup equals $60. And then our retailer's markup is 66.67. So again, this is all, the percentages aren't always the same, okay? When I give this to you tomorrow on the test, I will give you the percentages and then you'll just have to plug in the calculations. Okay, one price policy, a policy when you charge, which all customers are charged the same prices, versus flexible price policy, a policy in which customers pay different prices for the same type or amount of merchandise. And then we look at a product life cycle. Okay, the introduction is when you first obviously introduce your product. Hopefully then you go into growth. Maturity is where the product is reduced or revised and then then you come on to a decline. So new product introduction. Method one, we can do skimming pricing that sets a product very high. 
for a new product or penetration pricing where we set the product or the price for the product very low. Okay, just trying to use different techniques in order to get people to purchase your new product. They name the types of businesses that use markup to determine prices, usually used by wholesalers and retailers who are involved in acquiring goods for resale. Okay, explain why manufacturers consider the final consumer with a suggested retail price when calculating the price to charge wholesalers. Okay, so manufacturers are going to look at your end consumer to see how much are they willing to pay and then that price becomes that MSRP and then they go ahead and break down their percentages on what they're going to charge to the wholesalers and the retailers. Okay, price adjustments allow businesses to stay competitive. The right pricing strategy can help increase sales and profitability. Okay, so here's your vocabulary terms. So price adjustment strategies. Okay, you're just going to list those there. The six steps in determining price on the right-hand side. Establish your objectives. Determine your cost. Estimate your demand, study the competition, decide on what type of strategy you want to use, and then actually set your prices. Product mix pricing strategies, adjusting the prices to maximize the profitability for a group of products rather than just one item. Price lining, a price technique that sets a limited number of prices for specific groups or lines of merchandise. And bundle pricing, okay, when a company offers several complementary or corresponding products in a package that's sold at a single price. So the example I think of is if you go into cost cutters or somewhere like that, a lot of times they'll have a shampoo and a conditioner bundled together and you pay one price for the two of those products together. So geographical pricing, geographical just means on location. So price adjustments required because of different shipping agreements. And then looking at a term called free on board, destination pricing. So it's when the seller pays for the shipping and assumes responsibility for the shipment until it reaches the buyer. So that would mean that if I sell something to you, I am going to pay for the shipping and include that in the price. Just some considerations for international pricing. Okay, looking at consumers, competition laws, regulations, economic conditions. So there's a lot of things that you have to consider when you are selling. So a segmented pricing strategy uses two or more different prices for a product, though there is no difference in the item's cost. So segmented pricing strategy factors, uh, identifying who your buyer is, designing your product, deciding where you're going to or where the purchase location will be, and when will the time of purchase be. Psychological pricing strategies, okay, pricing techniques that create an illusion for the customer. Um, we talk a little bit about 10 for $10. In reality, a lot of times when you have a deal like that, you could buy one for $1, two for $2, but people tend to pick up 10 of the item when it's advertised as 10 for $10. There's prestige pricing where higher than average prices to suggest status and high quality to the consumer. So again, we may look at a expensive car, um, we price it higher than average just because it portrays um, that it's you've got high status, that you're rich, maybe you have a lot of money. 
and then everyday low prices. So low prices set on a consistent basis with no intention of raising them. Um, I think Walmart uses that slogan, everyday low prices. You know you can go there and probably find prices better than any other um, retailer around. So psychological pricing strategies, odd even pricing. So odd numbers portray bargain image. Even numbers portray quality image. So $9.99. Hey, we didn't set it at $10. For psychological reasons, $9.99 sounds better than $10. Okay, we talked about the prestige pricing, multiple unit pricing, and the everyday low pricing. So adjusting the base price, discounts and allowances, cash discounts, quantity discounts, trade discounts, seasonal discounts, and special allowances. So cash discounts would just simply be a reduction in price. Quantity discounts, maybe if you buy more of an item, you would get a better deal. A trade discount would be something where I may trade you an item in order to get a better price. Seasonal, maybe at the end of the summer, life jackets go on sale. And then special allowances, just various reasons why you may get a discount, senior citizen or something along those lines. So I'm not going to go through this. I want you guys to go ahead and take a look at it on your own. And then looking at pricing technology, okay, smart pricing decisions are based on a large amount of data, okay, so lots of research collected in large quantities, communicating prices to customers, so electronic gadgets and kiosks provide consumers with real-time information, so at any time I can log into Walmart and see how much the cost of um, an Apple iPhone might be through Straight Talk. Okay, and then the RFID, radio frequency identification, transmits information wirelessly. So again, looking back just at our technology that's improved and how easy it is to convey prices to customers.